Hello, my name is Alex and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to add translations or internationalization to your Angular project. And to do that first, we need to install a specific package which we're going to be using for that purpose. So first of all, we want to run npm install ngx translate core. So we're running this command. This will install ngx translate. And then we need to also install ngx translate HTTP loader, which is another package that we're going to be using. Now with our packages installed, I've taken the liberty to create a folder inside of our assets called i18n, where 18 stands for the 18 characters between i and n in the word internationalization. And inside here, I've created two JSON documents. The first one being n.json, which stands for English, and the second one being l.json. And the only difference is the actual text within those two documents. So the way this works is that you can actually create any JSON structure. So this is just a normal JSON, and then you can split it into sections, into objects, and then you can have different translations and different sub objects for your components, pages, etc. So in this case, I have an object called general, which is meant to have translations for commonly used, um, commonly used strings like hello. And then I also have an object for my home page, which just has a title, which I've set to home. Now I've just translated these into Greek in my l.json file. So this is how you create your translation files. Now with your translations files uh, made, all we need to do is to go into our application module here and we need to create a new method which will actually handle uh, the loading of those translations. So all we need to do here is to actually import the necessary packages and then we need to declare an HTTP loader function which is essentially used to create a new instance of the translate HTTP loader method, which in turn essentially takes care of loading our translation files. Now with our function declared, we need to add the translations module to our imports array. And to do that, just add the following lines. So essentially we're adding our translations module and then in here, we're specifying the for root method, uh, which should be used in the root module to provide the translate service, which we're going to be using later. And in here, we're specifying, specifying a loader object, which in turn utilizes the function we declared earlier. Now in here, we also need to use our HTTP client so we need to import it since we don't have it at the moment. So let's just import the HTTP client directly. And we also need to import the HTTP client module. And now all we need to do is to also add the HTTP client module to our imports. And we also need to go to our providers and add the HTTP client there as well. And with that being done, we're pretty much good to go. Now, before we actually start um, using our translations, we need a way to set the default language. And to do that, let's go into our application component and let's declare a constructor here. And inside of the constructor, um, first of all, we need to declare our translate service like this. So let's go ahead and import that up here as well. And the reason why we can now use the translate service is because we declared the translate module with the for root method inside of our imports. So from here on, we can go ahead and set the default language by saying translate, set default language, and then the uh, name of your language based on the files that you've generated and placed in the i18n directory. So now we can save that. And now we can attempt to use the translations in question. 
So first of all, let's go ahead and let's open up our application component here. And I want to create an H1, which is going to be our title and add a, a two pairs of curly braces in here. Now to declare your translations, you're going to be using uh, quotes. So I'm going to be using single quotes and I will say home.title. And this is essentially the path to the title uh, parameter here inside of my home object in my uh, JSON file right here. So I'm just saying home.title and then to actually translate the uh, string in question, all I need to do is use a pipeline and say uh, translate. So we're using the translation pipeline here. Now, if we save that and if we go into our project here, as you can see, we can see home up here. So the translation has been successful. Now, let's also try to add the hello string. So we will make a new spannable in this case, and we will do the exact same thing. So I will just say general.hello, and I will just add my translation pipeline. I will save, and as you can see, everything works perfectly well. Now, let's test if the grid translation also works. And to do that, let's go back into our application component and change the default language to L. And as you can see, when I switch back to my project, everything works fine. Now, one question you might have is why we're using the i18n folder specifically and how does the translation module know where to look? So by default, the, trans the translate HTTP loader will always look inside of your assets folder and it will try to locate the i18n uh, directory. You can obviously change that and that's actually pretty easy to do. If we just uh, specify the directory uh, inside of our uh, translate HTTP loader functions parameters, and we can do that as follows. We can just say assets and then slash and then we can just say translate like this. And this will actually change the directory from i18n to translate. So if we go back into our website, as you can see, uh, nothing is being rendered. And if we go into inspect and if we go to console, as you can see, uh, there has been an error because our HTTP loader has tried making a local request because it is an HTTP loader. So it essentially attempts to fetch our files using the HTTP client. It has attempted to find the translate folder, but it failed. So as you can see, nothing was displayed. Now, if we go back here and if we rename this folder to translate like this, and if we try again, as you can see, everything works fine. One last thing I want to mention is that if you make a mistake in your translation paths right here, so basically, for example, instead of saying general.hello, you say something like general1.hello, you won't receive an actual error, but instead you will be given the value before the pipeline was applied. And you have to be very careful with that because in such scenarios, you might accidentally misspell a path to a specific translation in your JSON object, and you might not notice it um, until it's too late, and you might have incorrect or missing translations somewhere in your project. So you should always be very careful when uh, spelling those paths, and you should always double check and ensure that you don't have any missing translations. This is why every single JSON object inside of your translations folder should be identical with only the values um, being different. So only the translations being different, uh, because otherwise you will end up with cases where uh, your website might properly render your translations in one language, but then fail to render your translations in a different language because of missing objects. And that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you found it helpful and if so, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or requests for future videos, make sure to leave them in the comments below. 
and I'll see you in the next one.